Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the Leo New Moon that happens on August 8th with its peak time of 6.49 a.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. This is kind of an interesting new moon to me but we have, um, it's going to be ruled by the sun who is obviously in Leo right now with the moon. Um, Leo is a fire fixed sign so this is much about self-expression, creativity, self-love as well, loving yourself and loving others for who they are. So we have a few aspects that I want to mention this time around. The first one being that Mercury, who is in Leo as well, is going to be combust. What does combust mean? It means that it's under the sun's beams, it's not visible, it's kind of hidden, and it's kind of debilitated. Usually it indicates some blindness or some secrecy around communication, being that it's Mercury that's the planet that's combust. Pay attention to the way that people are communicating with you or talking to you or how you're communicating with others at this time. I think there's going to be a little patience and critical thinking um, might be needed during this time so as to not jump into conclusions. Next up we do have Uranus in Taurus that's going to be square both the sun and the moon in Leo. So this square will inevitably activate Saturn who has been in a square battle with Uranus for 2021 and it's going to continue to happen for the rest of the year. So there's a lot of tension between these planets right now. So we have Saturn, we have Uranus, and we have the Sun and the Moon in Leo. So as we know, tension and friction can be both bad and good. It depends on how we harness this energy and how we use it to our advantage. There can be disruptions when it comes to our emotions, our ego, our feelings, our self-confidence, as well as testing boundaries and limitations. This can be a good moment, though, to see what is crumbling under the pressure. And it can also lend you some insights on how to rebuild or build these foundations with more structure and more sustainability for reliable foundations. Pay attention to where Leo falls in your chart and for that matter also Taurus and Aquarius and then you might be able to decipher what exactly is coming to light during this lunation for you. The last aspect that I'm going to touch on is Venus and Virgo is opposite Neptune who is retrograde and Pisces. Venus opposite Neptune always gives me a vibe of like fuzzy, fantasy, can't decipher what's real, what's not. It might be easier to navigate this time around since Venus is in the practical sign of Virgo, but just make sure you're not idealizing people, relationships, whether that's business, romantic, or friendship. Venus represents your money flow, um, so watch your spendings right now. Don't overspend, don't overindulge. Sometimes it, Neptune can give us that vibe of just like, yeah, just let's go all for it. And it's not good sometimes. So next up, I'm going to pull a card for you guys. And there's always a message or a um, grounding card, an energy where we can find support in during this human and legal. Okay. I don't make shit up. You guys know I don't make shit up. So we have both Taurus and Aquarius <laughs> that came out right now. And what did I just say? What did I just say? This new moon is definitely activating this square going on between Saturn and Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus. So these are all about foundations, our foundations. Pay attention to those. What, again, identify really more than anything now that these two cards popped up identify where Taurus and Aquarius are going to be in your birth chart, what house number they're going to be under. And then those themes are probably the things that you should be paying attention to right now. Keep yourself grounded, but keep yourself open-minded as well. We're dealing with a lot of fixed energy right now, in case you couldn't tell. I think we have to break out of the fixed a little bit, like find the grounding, find the laying foundation and find the things that we need from the fixed signs, like the energy that we need from that, and then apply it to reform your foundations, whether that's your way of spending, whether that's your way of thinking, of communicating, whether that's your way of expressing yourself, whatever the themes that are that are coming up right now, which is going to be very particular to each person, depending on their rising sign. I would say really, um, really consult that part and see what's coming up and see what needs to be revised and what needs to be rebuilt. Okay, so for Crystal to recommend this time around, I'm gonna recommend Ruby. That is a Leo stone. It's very good for passion, compassion, love. It's also great for courage. It's great for grounding. It helps with confidence, positivity. It helps balance your root chakra, and it helps with courage. So I think those are really good themes and energies to be working right now, especially with this Leo new moon. I meant to recommend, I have one. It's uh, the Blindfolded Cacao 
Farewell Ceremony with Celeste McMillan. It's at our Sherman Oaks location in person. It's going to be on Sunday, August 8th, so the day of the new moon at 5 p.m. Tickets are 35 early bird and 45 if you want to buy them day of or at the door. All right, guys, this is it for this new moon in Leo. Let us know how you're feeling below. What are you manifesting this time around? If you need us, you can always call us at both shops. We're in Los Feliz and Sherman Oaks, open to the public. Sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a very happy new moon in Leo. Readings are uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots. So when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately, and sometimes it's hard to see that, and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you.